Hey guys, HCG Chica. I am just checking in to let you know what I'm up to. Um, I'm doing good. I'm still doing the CrossFit. And I'm kind of going to up my frequency to four or five times a week, actually, because I'm really liking it. I'm feeling a lot stronger. I went for a hike, actually, yesterday with my husband. We took off for the day, had the day off, and we drove a little over three hours up into the mountains. And, excuse me, um, we did a three-hour hike. It was really intense, uh, about 1,200 feet of elevation gain in that time period. Um, yeah, so it was it was pretty intense. I was pretty tired by the end. I'm going to put a picture right here of uh, what I looked like at the end. Yeah, so anyway, um, we had a great time, though. I want to show you what it looks like. It's really beautiful. It's it's, it's a hike down to a reservoir, um, and then we hiked back up, and it's like this granite rock um, that's pretty steep down to it. So let me show you a picture. So, um, yep, so we had a really good time. I definitely am feeling stronger, which is really exciting to me. Um, now, as far as my weight and nutrition and all of that stuff, my weight's still been, um, I guess I wouldn't say it's fluctuating so much now as it's just kind of gradually going up. And um, as I said, I kind of didn't start P3 properly, even though I stuck to the right foods, which I really was very good about that. I didn't give enough attention to the amounts of foods. So um, I, when I was at 146, 146 pounds after my first round, um, I found that I, it really didn't matter how much I ate. I pretty much ate whatever as long as it was low carb, and I, I did maintain my weight that way. However, at 122 pounds, that is not working. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's something that I'm not worrying about right now. I'm going to basically kind of enter my P3 after my next round with a little more knowledge. You know, each time I do this, I learn more. <laughs> um, it just, you know, it's certain things that you didn't have to do in the past. You, you know, you don't, I was just going to automatically assume that I would have to count calories. Um, and I still don't plan on doing that um, every day. But I am going to start implementing some counting of calories um, at least part of the week. I did a little research on... Um, I just, I'm just trying to figure out why do I eat so much, you know, I don't know why I eat so much. I finally actually went on my fitness pal the other day and calculated just for one day how many calories I was eating. And um, it actually ended up being like tw oh, 2,900 calories. Um, so quite a lot by most people's standards. And I would say that's about how I eat every day. <laughs> so I'm not joking when I say I eat a lot. Um, and that's why I'm always amazed by all of you out there who, who live on 1,200 calories a day. I, I just... I, I really almost can't fathom it. Um, but anyway, I'm also premenstrual, so that could be part of it too. But I'm pretty sure I do eat basically like this every day. Um, so obviously at 122 pounds, even though I'm exercising a good amount, that's still too much. Um, anyway, I was doing some research on just some stuff with that and, you know, how building muscle without too much fat. Because I, I do want to, I don't want to lose weight during this time period. And I don't want to just maintain necessarily either. Um, unless I was losing fat while gaining muscle at the same time, which from what I read is pretty hard to do. So I do want to build muscle right now. Um, and I, I just, I want to find a way to not get so much fat with it. Um, because I've been eating so much, the ratio of, of fat and muscle I'm gaining is just, it's like 50-50, half fat, half muscle. And I, I'd rather it be, you know, more like at least 75% muscle and 25% fat or something like that. So I just was realizing I really need to kind of um, get a hold of myself when it comes to the nutrition side of things. Um, but I just wasn't really sure where to start. So I was kind of researching that. Um, and several places that I've read, these different bodybuilder websites, um, talk about basically using a cheat day once a week where you actually have a lot of, a lot of carbs. Um, and they said the reason that it's important to have a carb up day once a week um, when you're eating a lot less the rest of the week and eating lower carb is because they said over time when you're on a low carb diet, it messes with your leptin levels um, and can hurt that. And they said that's why a lot of times when people go on diets, eventually they 
they fall off the wagon and just like stuff their face because their body's trying to hold on to their fat and their leptin's messed up. So, um, so anyway, I'm thinking of instituting this where basically you do the one cheat day where you do have a lot of carbs. I still would never implement any actual sugar um, or gluten on my part, um, just because I, I do have a problem with binging. I have in the past, so I, I wouldn't do that. I'm allergic to gluten. Um, but I would do things like have potatoes and just some other things that are actual carbs that I don't normally indulge in. So you do that one day, and that's supposed to help prevent your body from like trying to hold on to your fat um, and also help you with your actual your cravings and how you feel about the food you eat the rest of the week. Then they follow up the cheat day with a fast day. Um, and, you know, I haven't been too fond of fasting in the past, but I've the four steak days I did this P3, I really enjoyed. Granted, it wasn't like a full 24-hour fast because of having the steak in the evening, but I could even possibly do that, you know, um, do a steak day. But either way, I want to do a faster steak day because I really enjoyed those um, fast days that I did or the steak days. And it really makes sense to me, everything. Basically, the idea is to really cycle your calories and j just keep things changed up so that your body doesn't get used to stuff. So you do that for the two days, and then the other five days you have your um, your nutrition kind of based on your, you know, your goals. Um, so for me, from what I've read, if you want to gain muscle without g gaining much fat with it, you would eat 10 to 20% above your RMR or BMR basal metabolic, basal, whatever, <laughs> your resting metabolic rate or your basal metabolic rate, <laughs> calories. So you figure that out, there's calculators online, and then you would eat 10 to 20% uh, more. So I think that's what I'll probably try to do um, for the other days. So anyway, that's my plan. Uh, I kind of wish I had started P3 with this knowledge, but um, as it was, it was just kind of like my fitness goals were just kind of developing at that point. And, you know, I just I haven't had to worry so much about the amounts of food that I ate before. I've never, never had to worry so much about that. So I, um, it's been a long time <laughs> since I've been at this little weight. So I'm, that's fine. I'm just, I'm adjusting to it. That's all. Um, because, of course, you know, before, if I can eat 3,000 calories a day and maintain why would I eat less if I can do that, right? So that's what I did. Um, but that's, yeah, as I said, that's not working now. So um, anyway, I do have specific fitness goals in mind, and so that's why I am, you know, continuing to figure out what's going to work for me and what's not. Um, so that's what's going on. And um, what else was going to say? Oh, I wanted to just mention real quick, too. I know here on YouTube, thankfully, there's a lot of informed people. You know, all of you guys who are doing HCG, you obviously believe in it, but... I've just been doing some research online um, because, you know, I'm trying to write some different articles for hub pages and I'm writing my ebook. And um, I'm just so amazed by how much inaccurate information is out there. It's so irritating. <laughs> it's frustrating. I keep kind of putting little comments. I, I wanted to see what other um, articles were on HCG on hub pages. And so far, the ones I have found are totally inaccurate in, in one way or another. One of them talks about how. Um, you know, one of the dangers of HCG is that it could uh, cause your, you know, cause too much stimulation of your ovaries and and make you have multiple children. You know, <laughs> um, and I'm like, hello, that the multiple births that has to do with when you take a 10,000 IU shot in one dose. That's a fertility treatment. We take, you know, between 125 and 200 IU in one day way less. That has nothing to do with that. That statement is completely inaccurate uh, when it has to do with the HCD diet. That article was talking about the diet, but mentioning these possible side effects that have nothing to do with the dosing that we're taking. Um, and it's just sad because, you know, that article had tons and tons of comments of people, most of whom are, you know, just saying like, oh yeah, it's so sad how many gimmicks there are out there. And, um, Anyway, it just, you know, it just pays to, when you do your research, to really see has the person writing this article actually done the diet they're talking about or whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, I understand. We're not going to, you know, these people are trying to make money doing these articles and it's something that I'd like to do. And I realize that I haven't done everything in life so that if I'm going to write about stuff, it's possible some of the stuff I write about isn't something I've actually experienced, I guess. But, um... Just still, if, for, if you're looking for information, make sure that the information you find 
before you trust it, see if the person's actually done it or if they have any actual experience with it. You know, it's one thing to research something and write an article about it, but there's so much information out there on the internet that, you know, you really have to dig deep and look at several sources before you can come to, you know, trust whatever, some, you know, conclusion. So, anyway, I just wanted to talk about that because I was just so irritating that there's all this stuff out there and people are reading this and then maybe they're going to believe that and then not give HCG a chance. You know, saying that it's dangerous or, or whatever the case may be, it's not dangerous at all. It's so safe. <laughs> it's just crazy. Anyway, um, other than that, I'm doing good. I am 131.6, which is, I think, 9 pounds, almost 9 pounds now over my LDW. Um, at, at the moment, I think about 5 pounds of that is muscle and 4 pounds is fat. Um, so like I said, not my favorite ratio, but I am definitely trying to build muscle. And I think I am going to be going for a full three months doing the CrossFit right now. See however much muscle I gain in that time, and whatever weight I end up at is fine. And then I will do my third round pretty much starting April 1st. My fourth round, sorry, April 1st. And, um, yeah, and then I'm really excited about that because that's going to be the round, I think, where I will, you know, lose a good a significant amount of fat, um, but I'll be in a lot better condition um, physically-wise because of all the training I'm doing right now. So, excited about that. Um, it's fun to have a plan in my head. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys soon.